So, welcome back. You can see the progress bar has got all the way up to uh, around about 85-90%. Um, so, what it's done is pulled in all the layers. Uh, it's merged them all together and aligned them so it's got them roughly where it uh, thinks it needs them to be. And um, it's just merging them together now and smoothing out any joiners that it's got. And uh, just give it two more seconds. And we should end up with one long file. Uh, with the layers broken up and pulled out in there. Mm. Tetley. Anybody wants a cup of tea? Tetley tea is the way to go. Right. So, like I said before, um, we're going to take this panorama, we're going to take the sky out of it, uh, which is a pretty much a very, very straightforward situation of um, just cutting away the sky, make it masking the sky. I, I don't like cutting. I uh, always try and do as little damage as I can, so masks are always, always the way I like to go. Um, and then we're going to pull in a sky from one of the other panoramas that I've already done. Come on, 99%. Tick, tick, tick. There we go. Right, and as you can see, it's already pulled it into this curve here. So like we were saying, it's very, very difficult to do in manual. Um, this is why it's, it's tough to do in manual, uh, to, to, tough to do it manually. Um, you've got to transform and merge, merge them all together like this, and, and it just does such a good job uh, itself if you just let it get on with it um, in this sense. And, I was really impressed, so I think I'll do all my panoramas like this from now on. Um, so, thumbs up for Adobe on this one. Uh, we've got 50% left, so it's pulled them all in now. Um, and if you look at the layers, if you look at the layers over here, look, uh, they are quite harsh on the line. So all it's doing now is just merging the lines together, uh, creating that seamless composition across all the whole image. What we're going to do, we're going to take a crop down here. We're probably going to lose a little bit of the area down at the bottom here. Uh, we're going to include as much sky as we can um, and probably put this horizon just above, I would have thought, above, just above the top third because obviously this dry stone wall here that you can see seamlessly now running all the way across the bottom of this picture, um, that's a dry stone wall which is in the subject of the photo. So there's our cup. Pull that down because we want to get it as wide as we can. So take it all the way out to this corner here and also take it out all the way to this corner here. There we go. Now we can just have a look at the rule of thirds. So we're going to be just above. That looks pretty good. Maybe just pull that in a fraction. Don't want too much distraction down at the bottom. There we go. And that also, if you look, makes a dry stone wall, wall boom, uh, run down that lower third as well. So that is looking pretty good. So I'll just crop through that. I need a faster computer. Uh, yes, it is a Tigger mug. Nothing wrong with Tigger. That guy's a legend. Come on. Okay, now what we need to do, um, I'm going to merge these layers when it's when it's finished and then we'll open up the the um, other panorama and stitch in this second sky. There we go. So merge layers. That merges all those together for me. Tick tick tick. Let's have a quick look at the baseball score. Red Sox 1, Baltimore 1. Right. And if we go to Open Recent, you can see Thought Cloud Panel. This is the one that I've already done, uh, as mentioned, with the blue sky. So if we open that up. I'm going to need to probably pause this video again uh, once I'm 
cropping and cutting and pasting this sky back into this. Here we go. Here's the other one. Uh, so once I'm once I've got a copy of this uh, and I've cut and pasted it into here, I'll, again I'll pause this video and uh, see how we get on. So this is a panorama that I've already done. This is the one that pretty much the 180 degree one all the way around the top, uh, and I did this purely for the sky. So as you can see. The exposure down at the bottom um, isn't great, it's 200 exposed at the bottom, but uh, this was pretty much done just for the sky, um, for, the, for, the, for this photo. Okay, so we've got this here, let's take a rough selection, doesn't matter how accurate it is, actually we're going to redo that, we're going to make it as big as we can. So selection of the whole sky, it doesn't matter if we include this bit at the bottom, we'll show you why in a second. Right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy that, so Command C. I'm going to close that down, don't need it anymore. Make this a little bit smaller. And then we're going to paste it into here. Okay. Um, no, not print. Paste. There we go. Okay. So, as you can see, huge sky. Alright. Um, totally the wrong scale for the photo. So we're going to need to shrink that a little bit. Right. So get your transform score tool up, um, and we want to make the sky that wide. So transform this right down to the width of the. There we go, width of the sky, and that is where we need to be now. I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to explain why in a second. I'm going to put it offset. So there we go. Turn that up. Right, now we can turn that off for a second, we don't need that now. Um, what we need to do now is we need to mask off this guy at the top. Now the new Photoshop has got a fantastic quick selection tool. We can go all the way across the sky like that and it gets this great selection really quickly. Now uh, now I'm gonna get the quick selection again. Um, as we get closer to the horizon here. This is where it's going to get slightly dodgy and slightly different. Okay, so you're going to get some little halos as you get around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this selection of slightly. Keep going smaller, smaller, smaller. We're going to expand that selection slightly. So select, modify, expand. We're only going to expand it by two or three pixels. So expand by three pixels, and then we're going to feather that by two pixels. Okay, um, and then because we want to keep the foreground and we don't want to keep the sky. We're going to invert that selection and we're just going to make a mask. Um, go to our layers palette here, quick mask or layer mask, select the layer mask dink, and you'll see it's cut out the sky. Um, and if you go into your layers mask here you'll see the black up at the top. Uh, black is obviously masked off, white is see through so it's showing through that. Now if we turn this layer back on Obviously it's on top at the moment, so if we pull that layer and put it underneath, there we go. And you remember how I said I put it off to the side? Well, this here uh, is where the sun was in the original picture, because you can see there's a haze all the way around here, and then it gets darker as it comes up here, so we want a bit that's hazy or, or brighter in this part of the sky here. Like that, I'm going across to the darker side over here. Okay, the only thing that's left to do now is merge the layers, and there you go. That's the panorama that uh, went up onto Frono's photo today. Well, the slightly, uh, possibly slightly different sky, but um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and um, all that's needed to do now is just to save that and export it back into uh, Flickr. So. Thank you very much for watching. This is Chris at DNG RMS Photography um, on the weekend theme of walls for frownosephoto.com. Thanks very much. Take care. See you later.